Pirate versus PSG LGD Grand Finals Game Five. Hello everyone, welcome to the final draft panel of TI-10 because this is game five. One game to decide the entire tournament between these two teams. This is literally the best game Dota has to offer. It is. This yep. is the best moment of the tournament. What, what do you guys hope to see from both teams coming in? You wanna go? F I mean, first Sorry. and foremost, <laughs> the best game of Dota possible, I think. That's, that, that is what I want to see. I want to see both teams getting their comfort zone. I want to see both, both teams getting solid drafts and being able to fight full force and you know, show the world and show themselves and us, like everybody, what they have to offer. That's what I want to see. I mean, this is one of life's true magical miracle moments. This is people working their lives, years and hours they, and they so much. They did Tiny, sorry. They did not ban Tiny. Yeah, oh wow, oh wow. They actually decide, okay, but Mag is also in. So this is something that we know that LGD, they chose first pick. Yeah. And most likely they were trying to force this mag for nothing trade or they believe that these guys were not going to counter the mag correctly but now team spirit is changing it up one more time uh, which is really going to be awesome but yeah back to what i was going to say because this is back against the wall for both teams this is like a the most pressure these people have probably ever been under in their whole lives or for ahmed like he's he's been so close twice now i i hope to see both teams just fully let go of all everything that holds them back, become a team, become the best humans you can, become like the best teammates that you can become and play the best you can. This is your, this is your day, this is your moment. This is for you to show the world what you can do in Dota. And it's amazing to witness. And, and I think we're gonna get it because these, already this opener from both teams, it shows us a lot of confidence. So I feel like the teams, they found their momentum again, they, they found their form and they found their confidence. And that's what matters at this point. And there's a lot to say actually about what's going on. So LGD had the choice. And they ended up, so second pick has won, like game one, two, and three, they were about second pick. LGD was forced back against the wall into a first pick scenario in the game four that we just witnessed. Mm -hmm. They took the mag and they showed how they can make it work and they can also counter it, which would show us game three. Team Spirit in game four, they showed that, in my opinion, they showed LGD they did not have the best they're understanding it. and they're going for it, yeah, here. Oh. And I want to say how like in this game, LGD, they, get their best strategy. Tiny is their best strategy. As we said before, you know, they brought this Tiny to the meta. They were the team making it happen. They were the team abusing the Tiny with the Lycan. They know this better than anybody else. They have played the Tiny Lycan versus Secret the other day and against the Secret Mag and they made it work. Today, Team Spirit, they played versus the Secret Tiny with the Mag and they won. Yeah. But, you know, is LGD better at executing it than Secret? Maybe they are. You know, you can only assume. This game will tell. I, we have, we learned firsthand about the LGD like in Tiny uh, very early on before we got to TI and this strategy, when you see it for the first time, you're like, oh boy, this is, this reminds you of some of the other broken strats that you see come up around TI. And I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice, it's, it's amazing that we get this in the game five and that somebody is manning up to LGD saying, we're giving you your best strat. Yeah. We're gonna beat you. And this is the team that Theory crafted it, you know. They yeah. are the inventors of Tiny and Tiny Lycan. It's scary to go up against it. And I like the team spirit confidence. They're getting the Collapse Magnus. One thing that has to be said is Rubik is getting banned. Like, this is gonna be Collapse Magnus at its prime. Or it should be, right? Because so far, LGD, they have countered it with the Rubik. They understand how to break this cure action. Are they gonna get the, the tools that they need in order to break this cure? We're yet to see. I think that's one of the kind of storyline of this draft. Miposhka Bane has been incredibly good. We saw also Bane dominate the game four for, for LGD. Bane versus Tiny, extremely interesting matchup. Why is that? Because Enfeeble actually reduces attack damage for, for 60%. It's really big. Tiny plays on the space damage. Actually, a Tiny that goes on somebody while being Enfeeble does ridiculously low damage, actually. It, it does counter him. It's a, it's a hero that's very undervalued, in my opinion, against Tiny. Of course, Bane into Lycan, it can be a little bit scary, but yet again, this is all about, this strategy, this tiny strategy, is all about getting this tiny to kind of a critical mass that nothing can deal with. I do think that you will eventually get some plays, or if we're going to see it, and we're going to see it executed really well, you're also going to see the Lycan vision being used, and Lycan versus Bane, Lycan versus Mag, it's a lot about the vision. Ideally, LGD, they get to start the fight, either through the tiny Shadow Blade or Bling, or something else, you know. Tinker fits well in these kind of drafts, because you have the Lycan to enable you, and if you have a good lane, you can also 
had a stable game and now your scaling is unreal. Um, this is something that I think Team Spirit should keep in mind. They should keep in mind these tinkers, they should keep in mind their best heroes and also for them, what are we going to do against this Tiny now? Are we trying to push him out of his comfort zone, play on early timings before he gets bitten and 20 minutes shard and all those things? Or are we actually going to try to pick this Nakes, Ursa, I saw Ursa ban. Are they going to pick a hero like Faces Void with the mag to try and take these fights later on against this monster? Which star do you think is a better counter to the Tiny Lycan? Because this, this combo has run rampant to ATI. I, I'm in the Tiny Boat. I am yeah. very much you just in think the Tiny it's, Boat. It's, it's too much. Th no, this is an Angel Arena hero. Yeah. This is not a Dota hero. <laughs> you, you have to beat it before it hits its timings. Nothing beats it. Like, at least that's our read. It's like, yeah. you will not scale into this. It, it's not going to happen. If, if L, especially against LGD, they understand the timings, they're going to push it at the perfect time. They will not lose. They are gone. They're not going to waste a single second in this game. As soon as they have the upper hand, they will push it, they will end the game. You have to beat it before, and you can. This Tiny doesn't, like he actually, me he mechanically cannot play quicker than the 20 minutes. It's just a Dota mechanic. He cannot buy the shard before minute I would, 20. I would argue there's a Shadow Blade timing that changes a little bit because he actually can defend this tower, surprise you, get solo kills. But other than that, like you still want to abuse him because with this naked Shadow Blade or with something else like that, like one slow, one spell, you're, you're at risk of dying and getting dragged into a bad fight. Okay. They actually pick the th they're just that. going for it. They're picking all three of the cores in a row. I'm not so sure it's a core. I mean, it might be. It might very well oh, be. Oh, you, you think it's a support Kunkka, maybe? I'm not sure. I think it's very scary to pick the Kunkka like that. Uh, they maybe have a read where... I, I, I think mean, it's a stabilizing thing for them. I think they're actually so confident that this hero is not losing mid and is going to stabilize the mid game and the early game through his boat fights. That, that would be my read on it. I mean, I see it. It, it is, indeed probably the best hero to stabilize the game for the Tiny Lycan because the holes of Tiny Lycan is, it's the first pick Tiny, it's the first phase Lycan. Like these heroes are gonna be, they should be punished on lanes. They should be punished in the game. You're just, you're just announcing, hey, this is a Tiny Lycan game. You know, so of course the Team Spirit is gonna try to abuse that. So these heroes are gonna have to, somebody's gonna have to make space for them. You know, you wanna consider that they're not gonna have the perfect Tiny Lycan game or the opposing team kinda messed up the draft. So Kunkka is here to help them stabilize. You know, Kunkka is a great laner. The bolt is good in every game in the early fights and whatnot. So this could explain why they feel like we need to get our hands on this Kunkka, especially because the hero that they might pick later is going to get counterpicked anyway. Didn't they only pick a Tauros hero in the last two games that they lost early? Now they're again going back to picking his very late. Yep. Yeah, and it makes sense with what a hero pill he's displayed on the main stage. I'm just wondering what he's going to be playing now with all these bans that are coming out for him. Like, the heroes that I think, if they ban the vo Faces Void now, I wonder what he's going to look at with this mag versus this tiny. So with these eight heroes picked, which side do you favor going to these final picks? I'm on the tiny boat. Yeah. Just a tiny boat? To tiny me, Lycan boat. If you want to break this tiny, you have to abuse the fact that he comes online late. I mean, yeah. everything is relative, but he comes online post minute 20. Yeah. Same for the Lycan. He should have a bad lane. He's buying yeah. eggs, so all the gold that he you know, builds towards this axe is useless. Lycan with 3k gold or just with the blade and the staff, of with it, like, it does nothing. When the axe comes and the shark comes, this is when the power spike is crazy. But before that, these are two heroes that are actually really bad at fighting. They're really bad at, you know, at, 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 at stunning, at catching. They don't do much. So, and I think you mm. have to use that opening. But so far, I think the spirit heroes, I don't know if they truly do that. And if you think about it from that perspective, I feel like Kunkabo and Skyrath, you're trying to run at them, hit that strong timing, but yeah. they have the potential to burst anyone. Yeah. And you have some Bane save, some Winterweaver save, but it might not be enough for Skyrath. And yeah. I also think the Skyrath was a preemptive pick for Toronto to Tokyo. Like, or if he wasn't going to play Invoker, uh, which was not banned, then this, the Skyrath silence is always good against the spirits. And I think they picked this knowing what's coming, knowing what this Dota game is already kind of shaping out to be. So I think it was also a good pick to, now you see this Ember, you see this Viren, and you actually see the Skyrath value that's going to happen in these early fights. Could happen. To me, I feel like there's a hole though in LGD's draft in the sense that you pick Lycan into Mag Wyvern, and you pick Tiny into Mag Wyvern, and Mag Wyvern, they have really good plays against that. And when they played against Secrets, they, do, they did play the same lineup. They played Tiny Lycan into Mag Wyvern, and they had a Puck and a Phoenix which are heroes that excel at messing with the backline. Mm -hmm. They stop the Bane and the Wyvern and the Mag from pressing the spell how they want to. I see a hole in, in, in the sense that Kunkka and Skyras, they don't do that. This Wyvern is going to have free fights. Same for the Mag, same for the Bane. And that worries me a lot. You, you know, for LGD, I think the fights are going to be much harder. And we saw Secret today, and I think the hole in their draft, they had a Shadow Demon and the Lina with the Mag, with the Tiny and the, and the Lycan. And, and these heroes don't really complement you know, they don't counter what counters a tiny lichen. Yeah. 
Something I want to mention actually is that they picked Meg and they banned the Rubicon to protect it. I think this Kunkka pick actually came because X has a similar function. Like if Magnus gets a skewer and you X and redirect him, or you X your ally, you can stop that skewer play from coming in. That's quite interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can actually X, X the tiny. Yep. We also see Enchantress coming in. I think this hero, you know, they have this slow lineup, but something you can do is you can play really aggressive early with Enchantress. There's double range supports and a Magnus. This hero can actually snowball this game. Yeah, it definitely can. I like these types of Dota drafts. I really like this these uh, drafts that are a bit lackluster too. Like I'm a big fan of Enchantress, especially back in the day. But there's a big hole, which is your AOE, your team fight, your ability to fight into them. Oh, TB, the draft. Okay. But, but still, they're banking everything on this Christmas tree wolf that's going to happen at some point. And it breaks the whole game, you know? And this is also the edge. It's just here to help that happen, to make that happen. It really seems like LGD doubled down on the, we are going to secure the strongest 20 minute timing. Yes. And Team Spirit, I, think, I actually think that LGD is on a timer. If they cannot enforce this 20 minute timing and snowball the game, this is when the Wyvern, and the TB, the Magnuses, they will scale greatly. So it's going to be down to can LGD execute their best strategy. Yeah. That's an exciting matchup for game five of the finals because LGD, like you look at them throughout the tournament, they've always been hitting their times. You look at Spirit, they've been breaking teams at what they do best. And now we have the game five where they're matching up here. I want to see Yules, I want to see a way to stop this cure. Collapse has proven you cannot play against his Magnus if you don't have ways to deal with this cure. LGD, they don't really have that. I feel like both teams got very powerful tools. Let's it's it's going to be scary. Mark. You think you're going to see the X mark? I can uh, see it. It's harder Let's than see. the Rubik one. Like I, I think it's half time, harder, but harder. I, I think it might happen. Even if you have to go high ground, you X the tiny, you hit the tower. But then you have to create the situation where the tiny is you do have getting to hit the something done. You know? you In the mid game the and stuff, it, yeah. it's not the same. It, it's exciting. Both teams have great tools to take it home. Last time Miposhka played Viren, he owned the game. Yeah. It, it's going to be crazy. I mean, that's what we wish for. It's like, can. Can both teams get a solid draft? Can they get their comfort? They did. We're in for a treat. So who do you guys think the most important hero on LGD is for them to hit their timing? Like, whose early game matters the most? Obviously the Kunkka, and I would also say the supports will have a huge part to play. The Lycan, the Tiny, they still have roles to play in the early game. Every, everybody does. And if you can help negate pressure, if you can get that random support kill, if they're doing something illegal in your jungle, or kill the wave with your hero, then sure. But if Kunkka is owning, and if Skyra is having a good game, they can make so much happen together. And for the Team Spirit side, do you think there's anyone who can sort of stop that onslaught early? They're going to look at the Ember. Ember. Yeah. Ember, everybody's looking at Ember for this match. Yeah, It has but, to be the Ember. And now we're going into the final game of TI-10. But before we go into the game, we'll be coming to Sumi with Team Spirit's coach, Silent. Thank you very much, AUI. Silent, this is the final game of the tournament. There is nothing more after this. Grand Finals, the score is 2-2. No need to hide strategies now. What is your team's strategy to win? Uh, luck. Our best strategy is just luck. Your strategy is just luck. Yes. Our, best you... our best strategy. Their best strategy is luck, and luck is how they are going to win. Do you have any final comments before this game starts? He does not have any comments. All right, let's throw it over to Insania and Odie Pixel. Thank you very much, Sumi. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the deciding Game 5 here at the TI-10 Grand Finals. Team Spirit against PSG LGD. I'm Odie Pixel, joined, of course, once again by the fabulous Insania. What have we got in front of us here? What have we got in store for us this game, Aiden? Man, what a crazy game. I think the last game was very, very much in LGD's favor straight from the draft. I think this is really even, and it's, I completely agree with what Seb had to say, where I think both teams have different things going for themselves. I think if this game does scale up, if it goes very slowly, if the 20 minute timing from the Tiny isn't abused, then LGD's, or sorry, LGD's draft is going to just lack in power as the game scales up. I'm a little bit worried about how much the impact the Sky, Kunkka, Enchantress combo can have together around the map, and how well Team Spirit will be able to shut it down. I think runes, just like Silent said, luck, you know? And I don't think he was joking. Luck really does matter. If they get those power runes, it's going to be huge for them. I mean, and we saw as well from Spirit the, the sort of the very carefree attitude. It worked out at the start of this series. I've been mean, asked before the first game you know, how the preparation was. Silent said, well, we didn't get to do much at all. We're just turning up to play and have a bit of fun. <laughs> That fun certainly looked uh, to be effective in game one and game two, but game three and game four, as we've just seen, PSG LGD, they have stepped it up. They've hit back hard, and now is the time to see if they can continue on the road to reverse sweep, or if Team Spirit can find that magic that was getting them through the first two games of the series. Yeah, absolutely. 
I think this is going to be a battle of the mid laners come after laning phase. I think the laning phase is probably going to be fairly even. Both heroes will farm fairly well. But that six minute rune, Owen, I think whoever gets that six minute rune actually has a massive edge in this game. Because they're going to get to decide what happens, and the other team has to respond. Absolutely. We've seen the importance of those timings, those power runes already many times in the series, many times in the tournament itself. Both teams will fully be aware of this, and we'll see a lot of focus around that first spawn. Looking at the side lanes here, getting into the action. Who's having the rough time here in the early game? I actually think most lanes are just going to be fairly farmy. The top side of the map, I think, is probably where you're going to see the most kind of action. There is a little bit of threat from the tiny edge to potentially make some sort of kill move. But I really think it's right now, you know, you want to get as much farm as you can out of the lanes before the sports have to rotate out. So I think I expect all six cores of this game to have a fairly decent start. All right. Well, we'll see if there's going to be any slip ups in the landing stage. Yep. Yeah. It's very even so far. Our mid lane. 11 for 1 against the 8 for 0. Of course, Toronto Tokyo taking quite the hit from the Tidebringers. And nothing to say. Bottom lane, Jing Kyu. It's a little low here, but into the trees he goes. A TP away just in time before Yutoro is able to hunt him down. Yep, so the Metamorphosis has been popped, but they have link control up top. And the advantage of having link control is the TB can't really run you down with his ranged attack the way he wants to. So not the ideal position for this meta to be used. If you're able to use it right outside of your own tier 1 tower, you can kind of zone out any other hero to come into the lane, but Faithion's doing just fine during this meta. Oshka trying his best to get Jinkyu away from his Terror Blade. Keep that area safe for Yatora. Yeah, nothing to say is doing very well mid. I'm a little bit surprised at this. He's almost a full creep wave ahead. <laughs> See the courier taken out up top. Mira continuing to trade as best they can here with Y. Yeah, doing a good job, making sure this top hard camp is blocked. Oh, well, here's try the move up. I mean, Collapse has hit the level 3. See if he's got enough lockdown and damage to take this kill. And yes, he does. At the same time in the mid lane, Toronto, Tokyo. Very low there. Has to get out of the range of a potential tiebreaker. He will, but there we have it. First blood up top. A yeah, good quick read from Spirit there as soon as they knew that they had the setup and the level 3 on Magnus. Yeah, this mid lane is going excellently for nothing to say. Toronto, Tokyo here has a hard choice of do I go for the bounty rune or do I stay in the lane and try to farm? Ooh, nice light of fist. Apologies off the torrent. But yeah, overall, uh, I think very stable lanes all around. TB like in about even. Mid lane is really the only outstanding uh, lane so far to me. Sure, and we know how scary nothing to say can get when he has a start like this. The setups that he'll be able to offer to the team, they're going to be huge and a fair bit of damage to follow up each and every time that nothing to say gets a catch. Yeah, and LGD really on top of refilling the bottle, right? You see Toronto Tokyo is not quite getting the same support mid, and that's because their heroes are um, forced to stay in their lanes right now. They can't really move their pieces on the map. And already winning the lane, getting that free bottle refill, he's going to be able to steal the small camp away from Ember. This is huge. Nothing to say is off to a great start in this game five of the grand final. And it's very hard for Toronto Tokyo to do too much about it. Of course, Kunku early on. So HP is not going to be too scared of being burnt down by the Ember at the early levels. Yep, and up top you see, like, this is generally how the early game is developing in this grand final, where the Tiny gets the one versus one lane against the Mag, because there's no real kill threat. Neither side can really pressure each other too much, and the two supports are kind of battling it out in the jungle. But here we go, Collapse is really far up into the lane. This could be a lot of pressure. See Mira. Back at his side, though, in case I'm eight, I'm white. Yep. Find the connection. I feel like the one small edge PSG LGD has had in this grand final is they're able to keep their safe lane really close to their tower constantly. They're not losing link control on their safe lane. And it's allowing for them to have very good uh, creep equilibrium. And that then in return makes Collapse forced to play much safer. Oh, see Mira. Not quite able to close the gap on the courier. Has left Collapse, collapse rather on his own. Nice little uh, circle around the tree line. We'll keep Collapse away from the two of them. He's actually a player that very often manages to get these jukes where he kind of takes the route that people don't expect him to and gets out of these tricky situations. Wonder if he can get out now, though. Why is on top of him? Yeah, this is a fair bit of damage. Does still have the skewer for a follow-up impetus or the combo of Arme can close in on him. 
Faith Beyond getting initiated on bottom. Fly is used, meta's used, but immediate TP out. Again, great presence of mind. You can tell why these players are in the Grand Finals. They're not giving anything away for free. It's not like neither team's attempting to make moves. It's just both teams are really on top of it, as mid. Seen the setup here with a combo. Nice dodge. Flies off to the side here, Toronto Tokyo. In fact, and over in the triangle, they are able to catch out. Or oh, in fact, well, why well, did deny the bounty room, but it will cost him his life coming over for that one there, as Team Spirit were prepared for that move. Yeah, and Toronto Tokyo picks up the Illusion Rune there. So a little bit of miscoordination there. I think if you time that Ancient Seal a bit better, generally speaking, you know, you're going to use the X into Torrent. If you get the Silence after the Torrent goes off, then the potential to get the boat in is there. And if, I think if they do the combo that way, they might have gotten the kill. But of course, the fear of Ember potentially dodging the Torrent with a Slight forced them to use it too early. Yeah, now they've sort of shown their hand mid. It's going to be hard for them to make that play again. Top lane. The Nightmare set up onto Arme. Collapse. It's got enough damage, doesn't look like quite as the Shockwave will miss. Still trying to chase down Arme, but the Shockwave and Skewer already expended. There's no further threat here against the Tiny. Arme is going to be fine. That's good pressure, though. They force them off of the lane. They finally have managed to get lane control up top, and immediately when they get it, they have the opportunity to pressure the Tiny. So force them off the wave, force them to go into the jungle. And he doesn't have any sustain, right? So he's going to have to spend gold on the extra region. They're going for him early on here with the three of them surrounding the Terra Blade. Yatoro is trapped in the trees. The moves from the supports of PSG start to come That's in. Up. See the counter play attempt it. Set up with the Nightmare, but a TP's already coming over for nothing to say. He'll be ready to fight if Team Spirit push any further, and they won't. They'll respect the potential of a backup coming in for Arme. They step away to not be caught out by the combo of the Kunkka. Yeah, Battle of the Power Rune now resumes. It's about 30 seconds left, so both teams probably talking about which supports can we bring to the runes, who can be there in time to help out. One haste, one DD, it can change the flow of the game entirely. Toronto Tokyo also just sort of cutting the wave, maybe getting the momentum of the mid lane in such a state that he'll have that ability to check the rune, but yeah, PSG LGD just fully on it. DD. It's a big rune. This allows you now to have the damage to potentially burst a hero that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. And bottom lane, Faith Beyond's really trying to pressure this tower. And now that he's forced out the Arctic burn from Imposhka, he ha Imposhka has to be very safe. He can't really sit there and be as annoying anymore. And just continuously nuke the creeps. So expect this bottom tower to start falling. Meanwhile, top, Am is doing a great job of just defending. He is. He's clearing out the wave, holding off the pressure. Something that Team Spirit can't quite do themselves here down bottom. Faith Beyond. So here, it's an important smoke here that LGD are doing. They recognize that Am is going to sit at the tower. The Radiant team can't really defend their own bottom tower. So what are they going to do? They're going to mirror your play. They're going to go and attempt to take top lane tier 1 tower. So the smoke up here, it's a preemptive move in case Team Spirit tries to do something. But Spirit reads it perfectly. They are aware. And making sure not to get caught out by these early moves as PSG LGD do start to, to slowly ramp up and... An early gold advantage, now hitting the 1k lead. They'll be able to catch themselves. A lonely Bane in the river, Mira. Yeah, and Yator actually gives his position away. He used the reflection there, so now they know the Terra Blade's in the triangle. And you can look bottom, Faith Beyond has absolutely no fear. There's no hero that could gank him in any shape, way, or form. So he's off to a really, really good start. And when we talked about the Straft coming into it, it's all about timings, right? So you want, ideally, for him to finish up his Helm of the Overlord and the Agadim Scepter before 20 minutes. And if the game continues the way it is right now, it's highly likely to happen. I mean, Spirit, I do want to try and put the pressure up top. Try and push Arme out of this top area of the map. See in the mid lane. Trying for the catch, but again, Toronto Tokyo fully prepared. Yeah, it's well out of the way. Spirit are aware that the boat was used, and that means the top tower is very unlikely to be defended. It's hard for them to get on top of Arme. Again, playing smart with the Avalanche, putting a stop to the combo. And now time's been bought for PSG LGD to come around. Yatoro immediately out with the TP. Doesn't want to be around here anymore. Mira will get found in the trees, though. Another death here on the Bane as PSG LGD continue to fight back against Spirit's attempts to get something done whilst the pushes are coming in elsewhere from PSG LGD there. Definitely getting a little bit more done in this, in this first 10 minutes. Yep, they absolutely are. And... Uh... Purge creep here on the Lycan. This allows you to take away the level 4 Flame Guard from the Ember, which is his major like fighting tool right now in the early game. So that gets purged, immediately has to back off. This tower is gone. Oh, look at this timing. Yeah, 10 minutes, a second tier 1 tower. 
A planet fast PSG LGD. Yep, yeah, LGD have the entire map to play with right now. They, they're they controlling the entire... It's basically wherever they want to go, wherever they want to kill, is an option for them. And Team Spirit, they just have to try to play this map split game where they're dragging the PSG LGD heroes around and trying to get Yatoro to farm safely behind everybody else. We're not going to see with the space that Collapse has got. He's going to have a good timing here on the Blink Dagger. I mean, how proactive do you expect to see them be here with this Blink pickup? Is it an immediate smoke and, a, and an attempt for a kill? I think very likely they're going to try to make some counter move where like they try to set up a play where they expect LGD to do something and they know where their heroes are going to be and then they're set up ready to take that fight. I don't really expect them to make some aggressive smoke, most likely around some enemy tower or in order to defend one of their own. See, just this constant micro here. Oh my god, Faith Beyond's being so annoying. Yeah. Toronto Tokyo's trying to farm jungle with his flame guard, but he's just purging it off yep. every single time. And he's taking all the camps himself, Faith Beyond here with the wolves. Yeah, and it's a tough position to be in if you're Team Spirit. You've really drafted this like very late game heavy draft. You you know it's going to take a long time for you to come online. I think if you see a team like OG play December Spirit, he probably would have gone for more of a slight chain build and try to make moves, try to set up tempo, and try to break up the, the pace of the game. But Toronto Tokyo opted to go for the more farm heavy route. So their draft is going to come online much later than PSG LGDs. And that's why they're allowed to dominate the early game the way they have been. Nothing to say. He wants to set up in the mid. Arcane Rune in the bottle. Full armlet. On top of the phase. Very tanky. Kunkka this early on. And a lot of damage to dish out. Yep. And if we take a look at the vision game, which we've been talking about so much during this series, because it's just so important. You notice you have the scouting wolves from Faith Beyond. So there's extra two wards, basically, that are running around the map and providing vision for LGD. And then on top of that, the Team Spirit wards are so defensively placed, they're right outside of their own towers, protecting their triangle and protecting their tier 2 bottom tower. So it's not really giving them any information about what's going on in the game. They don't really see any heroes on these wards, whilst LGD feel very comfortable moving around the map. So vi vision superiority definitely in favor of LGD. They understand what's going on in the game right now much better than Team Spirit does. Team Spirit is playing exclusively off of game sense. You can see the confidence from PSG LGD because of that. A vision control. Smoke ups, they swing through the, the triangle here of Team Spirit. See if Spirit gets caught out on the top. They don't, Yatora. Man, he to always back sniffs off. it out. Yatora is so good at sniffing it out, I feel like. Yeah, and he's made the call for Collapse to back off as well. They're both out of here. Yeah, and this is purely a game sense read. This is him looking at the minimap, understanding what LGD is doing, and responding to it perfectly. There was no information of that play coming. Wonderfully done. There's a little bit of a play attempt set up in the bottom lane. But they just don't have the damage. It's hard, just with the two of them. Not a job for the supports alone. Are but look they? at Yatoro, he's making his way over. Maybe, maybe indeed with the Terra Blade and the Metamorphosis they could get the damage done if they get a grip onto Arme. He is tanking though, 2.4... 2400 HP, he's got the, the Echo Saber, the Treads. See if they can do it. Nightmare set up, instantly TPs are coming in. See if they can do the damage quick enough, Yatoro. Focusing down with the Metamorphosis and the Illusions. They'll be able to take it. They kill off Arme. Mystic Flare's coming in, but Yatoro is able to sidestep it. PSG LGD, can they get a grab in return? Nothing to say. Trying to charge in. See Mira head into the trees, trying to distract them from the rest of them. But here comes the Micro from White. Nice. He's able to lock down Maposhka here with a setup from the Centaur. Drag back into the combo. He'll try his best to break the combo. Nothing to say here with the curse thrown out, Maposhka. But he will still end up going down. Still though, Spirit, they'll take that. They got in, they're able to take Arme off the map. Yatoro is able to continue to farm here with the benefit of Collapse and the Empower. Yep, you're absolutely right. But they did use both the Lycan form and the boat. And if we think about how LGD wants to play this game, it's important for them to have their cooldowns to get big kills or get big moments. Whilst Team Spirit are happy every time nothing's happening in the game, they feel like they're getting ahead. They feel like they're progressing their game. And that's exactly what's going on now, right? They know there's no Lycan form, there's no boat, there's no team fight that's going to happen in the next two minutes. And they're very happy about that. Yeah, it's we're seeing as well Toronto Tokyo able to silently play his game here. He's been getting a lot of space. See already with this time with the, the first time pick up the Yules. He's already rather hard for PSG LGD to catch. He's got the Javelin on his way towards the Maelstrom. So his game, his farm, certainly going to be picking up pretty soon here. See if PSG LGD are able to find any more action to keep this league going. Our mate in the neighborhood, ready to brawl in the jungle of Spirit. Spirit give it to them. But so far in this game five, Spirit, they've returned to sort of that, that, that fantastic ability to read the moves and just avoid 
any sort of engagement that is not preferable for them to be involved in. Yeah, and I think when you're playing some sort of like Enchantress Skyrath type draft, you want to be getting kills right now. You want to be punishing them. And if you take a look at the graphs, it's been about a 2 to 3k lead for most of the game. They're not really progressing on LGD's side. Yes, they're ahead, but they're not getting more ahead. And with their style of draft, you want to be getting more ahead as the game progresses. So. It's looking like that 20-minute timing really is going to be everything for them. Absolutely, especially now with the, the Shadow Blade done on Arme. I mean, he is ready to be a, an incredible killer at this stage, of course. The power of the Tiny, ready to rock and roll. Yep, I think the two supports from Team Spirit are going to be really, really important for this upcoming team fight because if Bane is able to get a grip on the Tiny for long enough for TB to take good positioning and output damage, that might just be enough for them to win the game. If this Tiny goes down, PSG LGD's draft has nothing. It's all about Arme. This time around, Mira Maposhka having collapsed by their side. Arme. He's just got himself Shinkyu behind him. Setting up with the Shadow Blade in preparation to clear out the wave. We'll see if Spirit hang around to try and hunt him down. Yeah, Maposhka with the read. He does have a sentry. Oof. Looks like he might have ran up with that wave if Arme had just been slightly more patient. So if we take a look at items, you see the Winter Wyvern's building the blink. He understands one good curse, you know? It's all about getting the one good spell off. So having the positioning, staying back, and then blinking at the right moment, that's going to be what he's going for. And they're giving him space, right? They're letting Meposhka sit down here to try to finish up the blink. They understand how important this is. Absolutely. It's going to be huge, these curses, against a lineup where you're running these three melee cores that want to be charging in at you. Absolutely possibilities for a huge turnaround Winter's Curse to come out in these team fights. Yep, there definitely is. And if you look at Yatoro, he's building up for that Eye of Skadi. He wants to be tanky enough to tank the damage and then potentially get a Sunder off. That's going to be this, the game for him. If he's able to stand his ground with Skadi and the Tiny initiates on anything but him, he might just be able to be tanky enough to stay alive. The one person who's really not getting any farm in this game right now is Collapse. He's, he's kind of understood that, you know what, I'm just going to get my shard and I'm going to be happy with that. If I can have it by 20 minutes, that's everything I need. We've seen before from Collapse how much he can get done with limited resources. This man's Magnus, certainly something to be feared. Something that got tripped up in the game, of course, where Jinkyu had the Rubik to deal with it. Something that isn't, of course, here this time round. So a bit more free of a game for Collapse to make his moves occur. Yeah, I feel like both teams are just waiting for this 20 minutes. Uh... I mean, if the pacing keeps going like this, I mean, LGD is going to hit their timing, and then you really got to look at that team fight. The nice thing about having so much time right now is I expect Team Spirit to be really ready for that fight when it comes. But look at this. There LGD are going to try to make a move right before it. Yep. Here, it, here they go. Ancient Thunderhide leading the charge. Of course, we'll be spotted out here by Spirit. I'll know that there's likely going to be some action following it. Great read from Spirit again. And look up top, Yatoro's just farming. Five heroes committed down here for LGD. But Yatoro has the space that he wants. Can they get a grab underneath the tier two tower? Jinq, nothing to say, they're gonna try. Collapse, he's gonna go with the RP just onto Jinq. Drag the sky up underneath the tower. They will lose the wave in return, but Yatoro is ready to turn up the grips there. They've caught nothing to say underneath the tower. Yatoro's picked this up for now though. Slider Fist comes out as they're looking to turn on the nothing to say. They get him. Jump forward with the remnant. He's looking for more. Trying to choke him with the chains onto both Y and Arme. Arme goes down. Y and Fabian the last to alive, but not for long. And Shockwave claims the life of the Enchantress. A spirit or collapse. Oh, he'll end up dying here. To the, the Thunder Hide of Faith Beyond, but of course that will also get claimed by Yatoro. Some more money for them on the defense. An aggressive dive underneath the tier two tower. But as we said, the turnaround, it's absolutely there. Yatoro is able to get involved, and PSG LGD, they get punished. Yeah, beautifully done by uh, Team Spirit. But keep in mind, RP was expended, Metamorphosis was expended, 20 minute timing coming up, and Roshan's available too. So. Huge rune, arcane rune for Ember. This could be a game-winning rune for him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think was once we see that Lycan form come up, expect them to make some kind of move. Actually, Tiny's missing a thousand gold for his shard, so probably not going to be able to use his timing. So great fight for Spirit all around. Like proving that they can kill the Tiny is huge for them. I mean, the Poshka's maybe even even already leading into more action. It's got the Winter's Curse at the ready. Both Toronto, Tokyo and Collapse up here, ready to play around him as well. Yeah, Faith Beyond's about a thousand gold away from the Ags. 
Collapse. He's got that horn toss. He's got that setup. Quick catch and a drag back on as Jin Q gets him in reach of the rest of the team. They've got to watch out for these pickoffs. This is something that Collapse was tearing them apart with earlier in the series. Yep, and Collapse has recognized that, you know, the idea from LGD here is to silence him when he blinks into horn toss. So he can't get the screw rack. Very similar to how the Rubik functioned in the last game, but this time around they're just going to try to use a silence from Skywrath. So what does he do? He goes for the sky. Great Str game understanding from Collapse. Straight into the pit now as well. Even just with the one member down with no Sky, no Jin Q, it's still enough that PSG LGD feel that they cannot take this fight there. Letting this go to Spirit. I, I, fe I feel like the pacing of the game right now, it really does favor Team Spirit. And they expect LGD to make some kind of move to try to break it up. I think they can't just let them farm out this five minute Aegis. Expect something to happen before that. Oh, it's such a it's such a calm before the storm kind of moment, I feel like. You see, Toronto Tokyo is just slowly farming up his items. I mean, this Ember Spirit's been a beast this event. And yeah. he's only a thousand gold off of his own Aghanims. And then after that comes a shard, and then there's just flame from... Oh. Sorry. Fire remnants everywhere. <laughs> and he hasn't been caught yet this game. One zero three. 3 Struggled to contain Toronto to Rokio, Tokyo in this early stage. He's also going to have that DD rune ready for the next fight. Level 18, he's he's going to hurt. Some of these heroes on the back line, they're not going to stand much of a chance at all. Jin Q and Y, they better be pretty scared. Toronto Tokyo making the jump in on them. Yeah, the positioning of the supports, it's really, I think, the story of this game because both front lines are so tanky. I don't really think they're going to go down without the assistance of the supports from both sides. So Meposhka and Mira going up against Y and Zin Q. They both have very, very tough positions to be in. You're going to have Ember remnanting into your backline, chasing the Skyrath, chasing the Enchantress. And at the same time, if Tiny gets on top of you, you're just dead. Yeah. If he gets eyes on you, you're oh. gone. And here's that time. So they've got the Ags ready on Faith Beyond. Ready to make the move here. As you say, they don't want to be held back by the idea that yatura has got an Aegis. They want to fight regardless into it. Yeah, they understand. If we wait too long, then Yatora's is going to be too strong. And here we go. Here we go, Arme. Oh, so, they see him. Set up for success here. Looking towards Yatora. And Poshka Toronto Tokyo and Collapse setting up across the cliff side as Y will be the first to get poked upon. See how Team Spirit want to tackle this. There's a DD on Looking for Oxus Collapse. He's in. Instantly caught out by the Ancient Seal. So no skewer to follow. Y. Chains. Back up. Is there anything they can do to save their Enchantress? I mean, does Y need saving at all? He, he, he's going to need to. As the Nightmare holds him back. Yeah, Wolf Form both used on Lycan as well as Tiny. So this means full reset. Now Team Spirit are in control of the pace. They get to decide what happens in this game. Yeah, they could push Aegis, Metamorphosis ready for, for use here. Tier 2s could be on the table for Team Spirit. Looking for some kind of pickoff. They know LGD can't fight back if they get on top of their heroes right now. They've got their eyes on mid. Yatoro starting to rack up the gold again after the Scardi. 2800. He's got that butterfly queued up. Knows that they're not going to be wanting to pick up any sort of true strike anytime soon here on the heroes of PSG LGD. The evasion would be huge. I wonder if it's enough, though. I like the idea of the Satanic more. Yeah, he's going for the okay. Satanic. I really like this because if he can survive the tiny combo, if he can get through it, you can purge off the silence from the Skywrath, you can get one hit off and then Sunder. Yeah, the dispel is beautiful. I mean, if you're a Team Spirit fan, you're very happy with the pacing of this game. You saw LGD being unable to use their first timing of the game to really do anything. So if this keeps happening like two, three more times, then you're in the late game. And boy, are Team Spirit geared up to take that late game. Ready with the setup top. Back Toronto, Tokyo, Invis Rune. Ready to go. See if he can get a, a surprise jump onto PSG LGD. Why? It's the closest right now. It's just the two supports playing up here, really. Putting themselves in the most dangerous position whilst the cause are able to farm on the safer side of the map. I think Team Spirit are going to look for some sort of smoke for this bottom triangle ward. This is a ward that they usually fight around when they have it, so 
Let's see what they do. It looks like they're moving over. Jemon Meposhka. They understand the importance of the vision of this game. And there's no tombstone this time, right? They're, they don't have that kind of teamfight vision tool on Team Spirit as they did, or sorry, on LGD as they did in the previous two games. Now they're relying on the wolves. So having the gem secures you that there's no wolves on top of you. They don't see where you're moving. They don't know what's going on. So great item pickup by Meposhka, understanding the importance of it. It's a tense game. I mean, you know the Team Spirit's got the solid jump, but PSG LGD, they've got the hard hit. If they can get in with the oh, tiny wolf, we're going to see Collapse come in. He's in with the horn toss, he's going to look to separate. Nothing to say for the rest of the team. Fiend, Fiend Scrub as well, locking down the Kunka. They get a quick grab, nothing to say, out for a minute. 10 seconds on the Aegis, and once again, the wolf forms are used, but Ahmed is deciding to retreat. They don't see the opening they want. There's it's, no buyback on the Kunka. Yeah, it's hard to fight with one of their most farmed cores right now in the game. They need them all up. Really to tackle Team Spirit head on. Bit of timing left on the Metamorphosis. So Team Spirit, they can push on. 26 minutes in. Starting to take down this tier two tower. Up top. Ooh, quick fingers. Jumped away from the stun of the tiny. It's the fortification is soon to be coming to an end. You see Spirit, they're happy to go for the dice behind the towers. Toronto Tokyo is in. And he's found himself Jin Q. Great recognition there. You know, Tiny initiates on your top. What does that mean? That means there's no heroes mid to fight immediately dives in. Wherever the Tiny is not, Team Spirit have massive freedom to make moves. The Tiny, it's really all about this Tiny, and two last wolf forms have not gone PSG LGD's way. In fact, the game is slowly swinging into Team Spirit's favor, and they're kind of getting past that impossible timing of fighting this Tiny. Oh, collapse! He's got another grab! Jumps in Why? He's gone! Yeah, if you're PSG LGD right now, you really got to try to find a way to catch Team Spirit off guard. But they have the gem. They're setting up their vision smartly. They're playing around where they, they can see the dire heroes. If you look at the minimap, look at where they're positioned. Bottom side of the map, two hill wards here to cover any sort of entrance that LGD try to make. So they're always aware of what's going on. Very smart positioning on the map here. Team Spirit recognize that as long as we just delay the game, we don't feed, we don't give away anything for free, we're in a good position. Yatoro will carry us. It's all right. In position now to maybe push down a threat in another tier two tower. I see the setup looking for Toronto Tokyo, but again, he senses something's up and they don't get that catch. The tower now beating on the bottom tier two tower doesn't get any sort of response. It means now they ex expect most of the LGD heroes to be on the top side of the map. I mean, they've got Metamorphosis up in 10 seconds. Can they start to poke the high ground? Or is, now how, how aggressive do you want to get with these Ooh. pushes? <laughs> it's a scary decision to make. I don't envy carry players that have to make this decision at yeah, this they, position in the game, but... Are they going to make the call to commit? Metamorphosis is up for you, Toro. How hard does he want to push it into the base of PSG LGD? Doesn't look like they want to. I think the idea here is to try to force the LGD heroes back into the base yeah. so that they then can play around their own wards and then potentially move over to the top side, remove any sort of vision that LGD has, and then get map control that way. And you know, with these illusions pushing safely, you're forced to respond. Oh! He looks for the jump and collapse. He's not able to get the grab back on nothing to say. So nothing to say. Mika is up a mirror, holding him for the longer of the feast. It gets cancelled by the avalanche. The winter's curse coming to a quick end. As PSG LGD now charging on the base. Boat comes crashing down onto Mira. Ancient Seal for now onto Yatoro. He's looking to back up and reset inside the base. Toronto Tokyo. He's diving in. Past the tier threes. He's able to take out nothing to say. Looking at Remnant over to the side. He's got his eyes over towards Y. Or maybe even more actually. He's holding on to that. Not jumping back quite yet. As they've killed off two. And with two dead, they may just have the room here to push up to the high ground. Yatoro. He's stepping up. Still a bit longer with the Metamorphosis left. They're taking this tier three tower. There's going to have to be buybacks. Jin Q back into the game. But a tier three taken here. Some damage being done to the Rex as well. No Kunkka for 40 seconds. Yeah, and no wolf fight. Collapse. Oh, he finds a grab. Jumps in. Drags back on the sky. Up made. Jin Q. He's gone for 70. Another man down on PSG LGD Spirit. They'll keep the push going. And you've got to be careful, you know, Collapse is looking for another one. There it is, he's in, drag back on Y. He just can't stop finding them, Collapse. Every single time, pick off after pick off. You can't stand anywhere near Spirit. No, you absolutely can't. And Yator is recognizing, you know, I don't have meta. I'm not 
I don't have my strongest spell, but neither do they. And he's just pushing it here. I think they're going to keep going for this buildings. They do not seem afraid. There's so much confidence right now in how they're playing. They get the buyback. He's been X-marked, but he has 3,000 HP. Ah, so tanky. Sunder, Satanic at the ready if he ever feels threatened. But look at this. LGD are coming in from behind. They recognize that they can't go on the front line. They need to catch the backline heroes. They're going to try and go for the easy kill first, or at least the, the easier, maybe. But no, it's not. TP out there, are able to stop it. Arme's in with the combo. They catch the Bane. They need more, though. Nothing to say in the team. Doesn't look like they're going to get it. Meposhka's off into the trees. They won't be able to find him to stop that escape. Team Spirit, they take a Rex, they take a tier three in the mid lane. They only end up losing a Bane, pushing them up now to an 8k lead against PSG LGD. Yep, and once again, both the Wolf Forms are expended. So do you know what that means? Roshan's available. Metamorphosis is ready in 10 seconds. Team Spirit are going to eye it up. That's going to get even harder to deal with Yotoro now. He's got the full Silver Edge done, so the ability to sort of duck in and out of the fights. He is going to be a right nightmare to deal with. We see Arme's farm not too far behind, but you definitely feel that at the moment, with the timings that they've hit, Spirit as a unit are so much harder to deal with than it is for them to take down PSG LGD. Yeah, absolutely. And it's reflected in the way that Arm is playing, but he's about to get caught here at the he top is. lane. There's Collapse in with the Horn Toss, dropping the RP. The BKB was out in time. He's into the Invis for the physical. Is it going to be enough here from this Terra Blade? Yatora is focusing down Arme. Arme is trying to run, but he can't get away from him. Arme out for 80. They're ready to chase for more Collapse. Steering in and close the distance on to Jing Chu. They've caught the Sky up. Set up there as well with the curse. They're ready to close up onto Fate Beyond as well. They're going for a third kill here. Skewer from Collapse. Back into the claws of Spirit. Team Spirit has lasted through the hardest part of the game. Now, everything is theirs. They just need to play this calmly. Don't overextend. Recognize that as long as we play around our own timings, this game is firmly in our grip. I mean, there's three dead. There's no buyback, it's only nothing to say. And why left here for the defense? As Team Spirit, they're under the tier fours. They've got a fortification, but there's still those long, long seconds before they get their two cores back in the game, PSG LGD. They're gonna have to try to do something. I don't think they have enough time to wait for Tiny to respawn. See how carefully Team Spirit play it. Goes back. There's still 20 panic. seconds, no army. They can push. They can push this spirit. They don't need a back. 20 seconds without army. They're going to look for more grabs before they close it up. Jump four for collapse. Shin Chu goes down. Nothing to say as well. HX point, nothing to say. Has a buyback. Eight seconds until army with the ancient. They're looking to close it up. They're they can taste the, the championship. They can taste the money. There's but the no backdoor protection There's kicks no in. Creeps. The backdoor protection is in. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. PSG LGD, they'll start now to force Spirit back out the base. Meposhka will get himself out with a blink. They just need to reset Spirit. They're trying to get out. Faith Beyond's on top of Mira, though. So, they've got the curse. Holding back the Lycan. Why? Being a bit of a nuisance off to the side. Gets the impetus on to Mira, but why? It's chased down by Collapsing. You saw it, they've got him. Toronto Tokyo, long mana. James holds him back, but now with a BKB armor. He has my back, though. Straight back in with the remnant. Gets instantly caught out with the Torrent. Well, the silence as well. Jump forward. Collapse. BKB. Stewart back. Into the clutches of Yatoro. Yatoro. RP. They're going to be able to lock him down with the RP. Where's the detection? Where's the detection? No detection. They need to see him. They don't get to see him. Oh my. He's going to live. He's going to turn towards Mira. He's still very low here. And then a slight change. They get him. They finish him off. Oh, nothing to say. What a TP. What a TP. He's oh out. He's alive. God. So, no buyback on Toronto Tokyo, no buyback on oh Faith Beyond, boy. no buyback on Ame. Oh my goodness. There is a Roshan. There is. Oh, I thought that was going to be it. Oh, I mean, it was so close. But the backdoor protection kicks in. PSG LGD, they're able to pull together a defense. They lose their tier fours. But the Ancient still stands. Yep, Satanic used, Sunder as well. You can feel the nerves. I can feel it. It's just so much on the line. Just one sentry ward could have won them the game there, but supports unfortunately not able to get into range. Let's see what they can do around this pit. They're still down 16k PSG LGD, but they've got all their ults up. Can they make any sort of steal? They've already managed to set up here onto the Kunkka. They're going to go straight to work. Yatora coming in with the BKB. The cars holds back on the side. Nothing to say. He's going to go down. Out for 110. Yatora is ready to step over to his next target. He's looking over towards Arme. Collapse. Popping the BKB. 
Oh, Maposhka keeping himself alive with the cold embrace. Spirit. Now turn over towards Ame, but Ame still got the BKB to go. He's killed off another support. He's looking at Toronto Tokyo. Toronto Tokyo by some of the yours. He's got another remnant. Slight of this into the remnant of the high ground. He's away. Both Ame teams chasing. again. Yeah, sneaking around under the cover of these silver edges. Watching one another. Metamorphosis is out, but so is the two wolf forms. It's both teams taking it safe right now. But look at why. He's stuck oh. on the cliff. Why? Dude, look at how carefully they're playing it. They're scared to walk yeah, up here and try to kill him. <laughs> Why, well, like... <laughs> oh, they got him. There we go. They'll take him off the cliff. But look at Roche! Oh, oh he's killing Roche! Oh, no, he can't do it, surely. Blink out time, collapse. He's got his eyes on him. Still no nothing to say or why for 50 seconds. Ahmed's alone. He's gone in alone. That was a risky move. He's got the back of a Jin Q. But Spirit, they're going to chase on. Slight chase. Oh, no, he's oh, gone. Two minutes, no, Tiny. Ancient exposed. Spirit. They'll make the walk over towards the Ancient! As they're, they're not waiting for the creeps. They're ready to close it this time. Only two left. Can they stop a PSG LGD? I don't think they can. GQ's got it over! It's GG! It's over, GG! They've got it! They have done it! Team Spirit! They come into the Grand Finals! Two games straight up! They take them away from PSG LGD! Game three and game four! PSG LGD, they hit back! But the game five, even though they get knocked out in three and four, Spirit, they come back with the same skill and ability that's taken them this whole road to the grand finals. And what a road it has been. They take down Fnatic, OG, VP, IG, Secret. And now in a best of five at the grand finals, the international 10, they defeat PSG LGD. Arguably the favorites coming into the tournament. Absolutely, and they don't just defeat any PSG LGD. They beat PSG LGD playing their best draft. This was all the heroes that PSG LGD wanted. Like Seb touched on, Lycan, Tiny, they invented this. This was the most dominant combo of this tournament, and they beat it. They figured out how to beat it, and they beat the best team at playing it. I mean, it's insane as well. Four of them, their first TI. That's crazy. Yatoro. Toronto, Tokyo, collapse for the first time. They've been on the TI main stage. Meposhka, he's been it before, but only top eight this time. Leading the boys to the championship title and taking home $18 million in Xenia. It's unbelievable. I, I know before this tournament, I was streaming and people would ask me like, where do you think Team Spirit are going to place? And I honestly said, on a good day, if everything goes away, maybe top six. I never saw this coming, not in a million years. What, what an a, unbelievable performance. What a story, what a road, what a dream here that they've achieved. The spirit now claim the ages. Ladies and gentlemen, your international tag champions team spirit. Especially for these fucking yeah, guys. Yeah. They came out from him. Hello? 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 Hello, Miposka. Congratulations on winning the International 10, I must ask. You are the captain of a team who has the four players who have never played at a TI. How did your team come together and become so strong? 
it's all because of our manager Corbin. He made this team. He invited no, he invited me and already yes. a good stack. Ch 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 yeah. <laughs> they are uh, about to take some pictures. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. It's just because we made you know, we did a lot of work, hard work. Also, we had a bootcamp before that international, and that was the uh, hardest bootcamp I ever had. So. I, 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 actually, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it just he, happens. It just happens. He said the manager. He said the boot camp. He said the team. It just happens. Now, you and your teammates are just, you're so young. And this is only the beginning. What is next for you? I have no idea, actually. I, 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 don't, I don't ever know what to say. So I have no idea. We, we, maybe we're gonna think about this later, but right now I don't. I don't really know what we're gonna do. Maybe, maybe even someone will. Uh, call will bro broke. I forgot word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you are going to come back next year and defend your title, right? I wanted to say maybe someone is gonna leave from Dota. I, I'm not really thinking. No, I'm not really sure that it's not gonna happen. You know, because. The, such a big price and do, do you really need to play Dota now after this so uh, I, I have no idea what who gonna who gon, gonna what uh, I, I hope you understand me <laughs> oh absolutely there is so much going on right now you just won a huge tournament the biggest tournament so to not know is totally fine look at your teammates they are celebrating right now do you have anything that you want to say to your fans um, as I already said, sometimes thanks for your support, every fan uh, who supported us uh, till the tournament. So, uh, uh, a lot of people wrote me a lot of messages uh, that good luck, guys, good luck, we believe in you. And I don't know, thank you, thank you for everything, thank you all. What a fantastic performance from Team Spirit. They pull through here in this best of five. They take game five. That was their eighth game of Dota 2 they played today, by the way, and they crushed it. Also, if you were to look at Team Spirit's team earnings before today, you would have seen that they had, uh, out of their six years that they've been around, $500,000 to their name. It, it upped a little bit. It's already updated. 18 million added to the list, Brian. I mean, this team has been has been fantastic. They delivered some amazing Dota. This team was a qualifier team. They were yes. losing two to one yes. in a best of five to make it to TI in the first place. I had to say that really loud because I don't know how else to portray like this is an insane run. They have had so many elimination games throughout the losers bracket, throughout qualifiers, making it sixth of the previous major, I think. I don't even know at this point. It's it's amazing. It is it is amazing. Can you make sense of it all now, Jenkins? Is it has it has it clicked? No. Uh, I'm gonna try not to scream about it this time. The crowd is already going wild. <laughs> yeah. But also what a great group of guys to win this. This is so good for the Dota scene. There are so many more tier two players out there now that are now inspired to play the game and potentially win a TI. But these guys, you know, we have the, we, we heard the story. They clean up their rooms. They're the nicest guys ever. They're so nice to all the staff or whatever. Yep. The anime ran at the major. <laughs> like, it's so good for the game that these guys want. You, you legitimately couldn't write a better storyline than this. That's just the charm of this team. From the very beginning, there are a group of guys we wanted to root for. And honestly, this is a Cinderella story of which we have never seen before at TI. They started 0-4 in the groups, and then they just made it, they barely made it to upper bracket. They lose their first game to IG, 2-1, and, and then 
they just stomp through the little record and here they are, they, they actually did it. And there's something so emotional about watching a, a group of young boys have their entire lives changed. Like, it, it's a feeling that you can't really put into words. But I um, mean, they didn't put it into words. Yeah, I don't words <laughs> I either, right? Them. They're like on the floors like, what yeah. just happened? We saw it in the interviews. It's like, we're just playing some Dota. They didn't really let it settle in, right? When when we heard from DM yesterday, he's like, that, that hasn't settled in. The money hasn't settled in. It's just some Dota being played. Yeah, I mean, congratulations. It's It's... Just to be a part of that and have seen that firsthand, it's something else. I yeah. love I love the raw passion of yeah. just like hugging the ages, <laughs> just just feeling that moment because I feel like in order to do what they did, you have to have just raw passion. You can't just you I don't you can't just you know practice your way to winning a TI like that. You can't do that. You cannot be robotic. You have to have that human element, the instinct that comes from the passion. There's no other way. I, I just can't even imagine the highs and lows they experienced along the journey, but let alone that best of five. Mm -hmm. You go up 2-0, like we were talking about the comeback from LGD, but they lost two games in a row in a convincing, stomping, strategical mm -hmm. fashion. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that one play at 19 minutes, it all just changed. You could see you could see it in their play. You can you could be watching this Dota game and you just be like, this is an entirely new team. They are ready to take this. Yeah take this ages. It gave them the confidence that they needed. It <laughs> injected it into them and they just, they were playing for the win. They just believed they could do it. And I don't know, it's its so hard to explain what we just saw, but that was incredible. That really was, Dota is just it's a, it's a really good game, and I also am very happy that the, the Dota that we saw throughout the entire tournament, this was a, this was a great pass, Jenkins. As far as like as a Dota goes, obviously if you if you strip away the teams, you you got the game and it was it was great. Yeah, it's it's the thing is it's like fairly balanced. You know, we we've seen a lot of heroes being picked. I mm -hmm. mean, look at the team that won. Yataro played about <laughs> seventy different heroes, even though there weren't seventy games. Uh, on, but then you also have this development throughout the best of five grand finals where. The Lycan Tiny was beaten. The unbeatable strat for the unbeatable team was beaten by the open qualifier team. It's just insane. It's insane. This is like the most balanced patch ever. The circle of life, right? Like, you start the whole tournament, people realize this is the most broken stat strat. It gets banned for like almost every game throughout the course of the tournament. Then you end the tournament with the team losing with it. I, yeah. I don't even think Team Spirit, they, they didn't expect to make it this far. They, they tweeted, we never thought we would be playing at TI Grand Finals. They just came into this tournament to play the best that they could, and they blew everyone away. I mean, honestly. four non-TI players, like, they're just playing yep. at TI is good for four of them, <laughs> and then they just go and win it, just like that. Yeah, I mean, Miposhka, I mean, he had played at TI, but he played, uh, he, he was top eight, and he had to play that TI with a stand-in because their their main carry couldn't make it over. And top eight still really good, especially when you're playing with a stand-in, of course, but he just, this is a captain that, it, it's not, he didn't come out of nowhere. He's been grinding for a long time, but he gets the right players in his squad, and TI finals, here they go, Brian. It's just like that. We watched them grow throughout the DPC seasons. We mentioned it this entire time, but their identity never changed. It was more like just refining and finding out, like you can see them discovering themselves within the Dota game. And it's just such a unique treat to have followed their journey for this long because uh, it's, it's, it's like seeing Sumail at TI5 where he's getting mentored by his entire team. But instead of seeing like one youngin come up from that, that, it's four of them. Yeah. And an oldie too, so it's good for everybody. <laughs> the old the old Dota players out there, there's hope for you too, as a coach. Yeah. Well, Can we Mopushka. talk? Well, old. Yeah. Mapushka is 23 years old, okay. you cannot in call him old. In Dota terms, like, you know, it depends on He that. has been playing forever. He's, yeah, he's been around fair. for a while. That's fair. That is fair. I mean, uh, we have Yatoro. Of course, you mentioned Samuel. He's the youngest player to have ever won TI. Yatoro comes close. He was the youngest player at this international at 18 years, and he will, with this team, take home the championship and also has played 15 different heroes in 17 games, which I don't think, as a TI champ, uh, as a TI champion, I don't think any TI champion has ever done that throughout a TI. I mean, can, can anybody prove me wrong? He also he owns three rampages. He also three owns rampages. half of the rampages. <laughs> yes, TIs ever. TI main at this stage point. ever. Yeah, TI yes. main stage. Yeah. He shaved his head as an offering to the Dota, to the Dota, Dota gods. gods. Yes. And they, I'm a believer. 
they delivered their blessings, man. Look at that. No, I think uh, as far as superstition spirit goes. <laughs> spirit themselves earned that. That was Lord amazing. Gaben giveth if you giveth him your hair. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, I I am looking forward to finding out if next year we're gonna see a lot of bald heads in those There's boots. gonna be a lot of baldies. Uh, I mean, the sure. you know we we were obviously earlier joking with the the belly rubs versus the head kisses, but I mean there's some form of superstition. Obviously, every player has a little bit. It comes with competition. You can't ignore that. And I'm I'm very excited that Team Spirit was able to make theirs. Uh, come true and make theirs work. And of course, we want to hear more from our world champions. We want to hear more from Team Spirit. And that's exactly what we're going to get, because later tonight, we have, what's in a name, Late Night. Hello, Slacks, how are you doing? Hey, hey Shiver. Hey, everybody on that panel. My goodness gracious, that is right. Late game is happening, apparently, right now. I thought we were teasing to it, but <laughs> hell yeah, let's get this shit on. We'll do it live. Gentlemen, <laughs> Team Spirit, actually, what? we're not going live. We're actually going to pass it back. Okay. That's a little teaser. You can't tell me I didn't just tease you and make you think that you were watching late game. We'll see you soon. Wrap it up. We got a good crew. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jake. Yes, yeah, so we were just checking in with Jake, see how he's doing. He's obviously, of course, still waiting for those champions to join him as well. But that should be a great show. Late game, of course, will start when we wrap up. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So I'm going to ask for the final words from all of you because it's been over two years in the making, this International 10. But it has come to a close. We got our world champion in Team Spirit, Brian. What's your thoughts? I also just want to give a shout out to LGD. I feel mm, like fair. there was a ton of pressure on them. And Ame especially, losing a second game five in the TI Grand Finals. They played amazing throughout the entire tournament. They were the most convincing team I had seen in a really long time. And it means, it means even more that Team Spirit was able to best them at their best in game five. I just got to feel bad for them. They worked incredibly hard this entire season, more so than any other team, I would say, just because the sheer amount of pubs that they've played in the last month outnumber any other team. And that's just the nature of this game. It's heartbreaking and it's painful and it just, it's gut-wrenching even, but it brings out all our best and all our worst emotions. And I know my closing thoughts are, even though the world changed a little bit, Dota didn't, you know, and we just, we all shared this experience together all over the world and that was, it was wonderful, really. Yeah, Dota is just the best game. It, it really <laughs> is. I know it's so generic, but I legitimately have been looking for other games to give me the high. Never does. I came from other games that are kind of cultures, communities, more than they are games where it kind of becomes your entire life. And I'm okay with that. And I think everybody's okay with that. And there just isn't anything. There's just nothing. And I have theories. I think it's because Dota is so community driven. We've all contributed to the game. We've all built it. And I think that leads to the balance. But man, every year with TIs like that, it, that just... It just goes to show how good the game is. It's just a, rep a representation of how good the game is and how balanced it is, that every goddamn year we get some TI that's insanely hype and insanely balanced. Yeah, and do we ever have the favorites going into TI actually winning TI? No. Very rarely. PSDLTD has been playing with this bullseye on their backs, and and it shows. Uh, that's, uh, of course, making it a little easier for Team Spirit because they knew who they were facing. They had actually faced PSDLTD quite a few times as well, and... Unfortunately for PSDL ZD, uh, that is uh, the end of the road facing second place. It's still really good. <laughs> You're still second place. Yeah, still really good. But uh, the players and all their fans will probably not accept that as being really good until a little bit later down the road. It, it takes a little time to to sink in, a I would imagine. Process. A lot to process. A lot to process for sure. A lot to process for Team Spirit and their fans as well because TI1 was the only... TI ever taken home by the Eastern European region, uh, by Navi, of course. And since then, they've come close at TI2 and TI3. But then since then, nothing. TI6, or rather top six at, uh, at some other TIs with the Virtus Pro squad. But Team Spirit here, they take it home. And we're going to find out if if they have fully accepted yet yeah, that they can, that they have this victory in the bag. Like, nobody can take that away from them anymore. That Aegis is theirs. So uh, we are going to say goodbye here from the desk as we prepare for Late Game. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been an absolute blast. Late Game will be there with your champions, Team Spirit. Congratulations once again.
better at this exchange is Matsu Pasta BKB just going absolute ham on collapse. There's the ice path again. GG's is called Cinderance. He disappears in a matter of seconds. She killed a fall as well. GG is called. Take this game three. Gigi's got his own. It's on 